Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Hayley, founder of Creative Photo Folk, and today I'm taking you behind the scenes of how I created my composite artwork, A Burden Too Big to Bear. So how this image initially came about is that I had photographed this pose. Now, I photographed this pose in probably about 2014. I think it was probably the first or second self-portrait shoot that I'd ever done in my life. And how it came about was I was standing in my parents' kitchen and the way the light was hitting this cabinet I thought was really beautiful. So naturally, I decided to put on a costume and crawl in underneath. So the dress is one I found at an op shop and I've just always really loved the results from this photo shoot because I've got quite pale glowing skin which contrasts really well with a pop of the pink and then my face hidden in darkness. So in the back of my mind I had always wanted to use an image from this set within a composite but it took maybe six years before I ever did. So at first I experimented with lots of ideas. I'll just show you a couple. So this was something I just mocked up together and I don't hate it, but the problem for me was I couldn't figure out what the story was of a angel in a jar and I need my stories to make sense. So there needed to be some kind of motivating factor as to how she got there and I could not find that. So that idea did not fly. But considering her turning, I knew I wanted to do something that was sort of more Renaissance than I usually do. And what was popular in Renaissance era? Well, it was angels. And my mother loves angels, so I have grown up completely surrounded by them. So it seemed only natural that one would eventually creep into my work. But if I made her an angel, then I had to create some kind of story about why she was hiding her face and looking a bit forlorn. And it sort of became this story that I don't really talk about, but for me, it was about the fact that we have this notion of good and evil. And who decides what good and evil is? Where is the line? And I just thought if you were an angel having to kind of make that decision, it would be quite overbearing, particularly in modern society, because what used to be considered good and evil has very much evolved over time from what the Bible has dictated. I mean, for example, if we take the seven deadly sins, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath and sloth, you will see a lot of all of these in modern society. I call it a burden too big to bear because I just thought she's run away to the middle of nowhere and is kind of overburdened by being in this position and having to make these really difficult decisions. So to create this angel... I'll just show you what made up the components. So essentially the wings, which is really the main feature here, were taken from this photo I took of a swan in London. And the ground is from Mount Cook in New Zealand. And I, I really wanted to use the yellow grass because I thought it would pop and contrast well with the pink dress. So let's work through the file. Let me turn off all my layers. So to begin, I just had a black background, and that's because later on, the when I pop bits into the sky, I actually needed a black background to have some kind of solidness behind it. To give that some texture to that black background, I just grabbed a random image that had a little bit of texture with black and white, and then really blurred it. Next, I added in, sort of doesn't make sense out of order, but I added in my ground, and then I used a layer mask to just get rid of the top really made that very contrasty and then I added a little bit of fog across the horizon just to make that a little bit softer as a transition from the um, earth to the sky added a little bit more of that and then this is her shadow starting to pop in it has to obviously be further down in the layer stack than her layer so it, because it's underneath her then I just gave it a bit of a vignette to darken up the edges and some other little toning darkening things down just to give you an idea of what's happening there. Then I do a bit of work on the sky. I popped in a cloud that I'd taken so I'll show you that and then just a bit more sky to even that out. Then I popped in uh, an image with some stars, took out the saturation of that. Then here it comes her shadow which means she must be next. Now, for some reason, she has already been combined with the wings and the halo, and I don't know where that original file is. 
But I showed you the picture of this one. I just cut out the two wings individually and popped them in. As you can see, made them a bit bigger. And then the halo would have been created by making a selection just like this, creating a stroke, and then giving it a bit of a glow. I won't go into that. That's something I cover more in depth inside my course, Exposing Illusions. Then I started doing the toning to make her fit. So some of the light was wrong. If she had a halo, it would be lighting up her arm. So I've just lit that up. I have darkened down her dress because she's sitting on the ground, darkened her down, popped a spot of light on her arm, fixed something that was annoying me about her face. Oh, I could see an eyebrow that I didn't like. Just changed her toning, her lighting, more darkening down the bottom. Really brought the curves up on that to give her a lot more exposure. Then added some contrast with the levels. I'll just quickly go past this stuff because I know it's not the most exciting. Darken her skirt some more. Darken her up a bit more and then lightened just the top to uh, match the way the halo would be shedding light. Now, uh, I needed some grass over top of her. Otherwise, she just wasn't going to fit. So I very carefully cut out or painted around some bits of grass so I could pop them in over top. And they were just from the original image. Looks like that. And then I did a fair bit of toning on those to make sure that they matched the original background. So I won't go through all of those. Then we're pretty much done in terms of compositing. So it was really now down to toning. And this was just changing the light. So adding some more in the background here, adding some more to the sky, darkening down very much the edges of the image, but making it look like she is glowing. So I left some light in the center. And again, just making sure that the lighting overall matches. Then I brought in some of the Renaissance kind of sepia toning and I did that using a color lookup layer. Then I kept that toning but I made it more blue again with a color lookup and then I kind of went back a little bit to that more sepia tone and add a lot more dark again. Did my overall toning which really is just bringing a lot of light into the center. Again, I won't go through all of those because there is a lot of toning layers as usual. Then I did something I haven't done in a really long time, but I basically just painted random colors onto a layer and then set it to overlay and change the opacity. And that just adds in a bit of like um, toning to the sky. And then I had that set to, I think, 37. Yep. Same again, just to give even more yellow bright colors to the center. I took out her moles because I guess I thought an angel wouldn't have them. And then some final touches, um, just brightening the center here to draw the eye to her face or what you can see of it. This is just adding a little bit more light behind her. And then I just uh, brightened her leg. And so that's how a burden too big to bear was created. Not a lot of effort into this. You can see it's basically just a ground, a subject. I've added some little details to give her a story. And then just use a bunch of layers to create a sky out of nothing, essentially. Now I have sold a few prints of this, and it actually does look really quite beautiful in print form. And funnily enough, it's not my mother's favorite. Creating these artworks is always such a joyous process, and I love being able to share them with you. If you'd like to learn the specifics of how to photograph and edit these kinds of works for yourself, then my course, Exposing Illusions, shows you how to do exactly that. You can learn more in the description below. But for now, thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again. See ya!